Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We uh, can continuing on from our um, Arabic classes from the Medina Arabic course book one. Um, okay, actually, before we go any further, if anybody is able to hear me clearly, could you just send a message? Just so that I know that things are working properly. If it's too soft or anything, it needs to be upped. You can just let me know. Okay, it's working clearly. Okay, Jazakumullah khair. Okay. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So we are on page 28 of the Medina Arabic course book one. We have done 11 lessons so far. We are on book, uh, on lesson number five, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, lesson number five as far as the book is concerned. And we are on uh, exercise number two on page 28. Um, any case, the, the topic at hand that we were busy studying is the issue of mudaf and mudaf ilay, the possessor and the possessed item. The you know that's that's basically what we were dealing with, and that's where we had last stopped in October last year, uh, end of October, and that's where we're continuing on straight away from the top of this page here. So we begin Now because we've been gone for a while, um, I'm, I will do a couple of the uh, examples. Anybody who has the, the answers ready at hand, who wants to answer any of them, regardless of where they fit in, you can see we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen 10, uh, 12, uh, 14 words over here, sentences at least. So if you want to answer any of them, you're more than welcome to uh, make the sentence and just you know post it as an answer just so you know you know how the things are working and if you are able to translate it all the better too so this uh, exercise here what he says is that take the, the first word and uh, attribute it to the second in other words make it a possessed item of the second word. In other words, he gives you the example, kitabun, a book, Muhammadun, Muhammad. So take the first word, which is kitab, and make it belong to Muhammad. Kitabu Muhammadin, Muhammad's book. Maktabun al-mudarrisu, maktabul mudarrisi. Maktabul mudarrisi. Kitabu Muhammadin. As you know, the mudaf will have a, uh, the mudaf, the mudaf ilay will get a kasra on it. In the case of Muhammad, it has Muhammadin. And in the case of Al Mudarrisi, because of, of Al, it can, cannot have Tanween, therefore it is Al Mudarrisi. But in any case, Maktabul Mudarrisi, the teacher's desk. So, like I say, I'll go on through the rest of the examples. A anybody who wants to answer, yeah, you just one message away. Okay, next one Kalamun Hamidun. Kalamu Hamidin, Hamid's pen. Miftahun al Baytu, Miftahul Bayti, the key of the house. Miftahun al Baytu, Miftahul Bayti. Next one is Baytun and Abbasun, Baytu Abbasin, uh, which is now Abbas's house. Next one is Dukanun and Atajiro. Dukanun atajiru, dukanu tajiri. Um, next one that we carry on from here, ghurfatun and aliyun. So ghurfatu aliyin. You see, this book throws out for you a lot of exercises, a little bit of theory and a lot of exercises. And this is the crux of what the lesson is all about. When you put in the effort to do the exercises, you see you reap the rewards at the end of the day. If you don't put in the effort to follow up to do some of the exercise and stuff like this here at the end of the day you are the one that suffers because it's like it passes over your head because you are not engaging actively in the uh, lesson so you know it's like if you were to come across the lesson tomorrow will you remember it it's that sort of thing so even if you're not doing it here now and running through it all like i say we're just resuming after a lengthy uh, period away so 
even if you're going to be going through this on your own later on, whatever the case may be, make sure you take out the effort and the time to go through each of these exercises and do them so that you can grow your uh, uh, Arabic capabilities. Any case, so Ghurfatu Aliyin, Ali's room. Next one, we've got Baytun Al Mohandiso, Baytul Mohandisi, the engineer's house. So Al Mohandiso, the engineer. The next one we've got on the list is Daftarun. Daftarun Saeedun. Daftaru Saeedin. Saeed's notebook. Moving on. Ismun al Waladu. Ismul Waladi. The boy's name. Next one we've got is Mindilun and Yasirun. Mindilu Yasirin. Next one, famous one, and this is where your Arabic grows and you start to begin to understand the Quran and Hadith and you know, things, everything starts somewhere and it starts small. So, Kitabun Allahu becomes Kitabullahi. Kitabullah. Who is there that doesn't know the Kitab of Allah? So Kitabullah, Baytullah, you know these sort of things. You've heard the, the, the words being used before. The Baytullah, the Kaaba, well, Kaaba to Baytullah. You've heard the term. You know that Al Quranu Kitabullah. The Quran is the book of Allah. So you know, you hear things, and now you can understand the theory behind it as to why it is done in that particular way. Okay, but anyway, moving on. Next one is Qamisun. Ammarun, Kamisu Ammarin, Ammar's shirt. Next one is Bintun and At Tabibu, Bintu Tabibi, Bintu Tabibi, the doctor's daughter. Our next one, second last, is Sarirun and Khalidun, Sariru Khalidin, Khalid's bed. And the last one of this. Uh, Batch of exercises is Miftahun as Sayara to Miftahu Sayara T. Miftahu Sayara T. The car's key. The key of the car, whichever way you want to uh, phrase it, but that's what it means. So that's the end of exercise number two. And we only going to do, let's see. Yeah, now we've got quite a bit before we reach lesson number six. So that definitely won't be tonight. We'll only stop here at the end of page 28, just as one page for tonight, until you know you can get back into the swing of things. But yeah, so that was exercise number two. Moving on to exercise number three. It says, ma kalimati. The most famous exercise that comes over and over and over and over in this book to make certain, as you would see the first exercise, with all the tashkil, the harakat, fatha uh, kasra, bamma, zabar zair, pesh, gapan, and whatever in terms you want to refer to it as, it put it all on, on all, all the words. And then in this one year, it takes everything off. Because the purpose of reading Arabic is not to be able to just read it with the zabar zair and pesh on it. It's to be able to read Arabic without those things. So, you know, when you open up a uh, book of hadith if you open up uh, uh, most of the books of uh, uh, of the deen be it uh, fiqh or tafsir or anything zabr zayr and pesh are not going to be there zabr, you know to, to put things in the correct context when you have your uh, zabr zayr and pesh or fatha kasra dhamma whatever you want to call it by these are like a child's training wheels it's not supposed to be on there you're supposed to be able to you know it, properly put, we should be reading Arabic. Forget about without the Fatha Kasra Dhamma. We should be able to read Arabic without the dots and things like that too. But obviously, uh, it, that takes a, a lot more uh, studying to be able to reach that level. But be that as it may, at the very least, we should be able to read and understand Arabic without the training wheels. So that's what we are focusing on, to be able to read, understand, and translate Arabic without training wheels. So he said, Iqra waktub ma'adabti awakhir al kalimati, read and write while putting the correct endings on the words. So if you look at the first one, he's got two words over there, and obviously the minute I read it, okay, let me put it this way, Bab al Madrasa. Now, if I was a 
uh, a thief, so to speak, who thinks that I can uh, wiggle something in under the door, maybe you won't notice it. Then I say, you know, Bab al Madrasa. I'm not putting the harakat on it. Sure, maybe somebody will understand what I'm actually talking about, you know, because I mean, after all, it's Bab and al Madrasa, so it's got to mean uh, that. But at the end of the day, you ain't fooling anybody. As far as anybody who knows, they know that you are swallowing the words because you don't know how it's supposed to be. And we don't want to be that way. We want to be able to read the things the way it's supposed to. So therefore, we're not going to say Bab and put the sock in. That's why we, as part of our lessons in this entire book, we will not put the ha a sock in at the end of the word. And that's why I am reading Miftahu Sayyarati and Sariru Khalidin and so on and so forth, as opposed to saying Sariru Khalid and Miftahu Sayyara and Babul Bayt. We're not saying it that way, despite the fact that in spoken word, it would be done that way. But if you are not getting your Nahu, your Harakat and things down in the correct way now, then you're going to suffer with it later on down the line. So that is why we're not ever going to put a sark in at the end of a word. So we're not going to say, for example, Babul Madrasa. We're not going to do it. And neither are we ever going to be putting a sark in on the beginning of a, fur, on a in the middle of a sentence, such as Bab. Even if you said Bab al Madrasati, it would still be unacceptable because you're not stopping after Bab. It's a continual uh, sentence. And this ain't, uh, the, the, you know, that uh, where you can. Uh, manage, ment, it don't work that way. Management, it's one word. You can't stop and break it up into two words. So, Babul Madrasati, it has to flow into one another. So, Babul Madrasati, the, mad, okay, Babul Madrasati, the, which means the door of the school. And yes, that's correct. So Babul Madrasati, the door of the school. The next one is Himarul Rajuli. Himarul Rajuli. Okay, we're not going to get get, uh, get sidetracked with uh, words which we have not done yet. So Himar is a word we've done. Rajuli is a word we've done. So, you know, it's straightforward. But if your uh, vocab has increased, then you know that this word could also be read perhaps as humar as opposed to himar. So apart from humar and the word rajuli could mean rigidly. It could mean uh, uh, rajili. You know, it could be read in different, different ways based on, I mean, totally different, different things. So for just the first word, you know, people like to throw their, uh, like, you know, when people have all these memes, so, uh, you know, uh, you have this one meme that went around where the word is, so to say, like, you know, put a, at a man or at his wife, whichever way you want to put it. So let's just go with the masculine form. So with the, with the statement says, anta or anti, and the word which follows it is this word here, which is, if you look at it, you only know it one way as himar, but the, so obviously, if you read it as anta himar, it would mean you're a donkey. But using the word humar, humar means totally different. Humar means beautiful. So uh, anti humar, it means you are beautiful. But you know, because of it being uh, an uncommon word, it's like you can, so to speak, insult someone while praising them at the same time. Because if they don't know, they think you're calling them a donkey. If they do know, they'll think, okay, you're actually saying this. But anyway, so we're not going to do words that are outside our scope of uh, the vocab of this book. So we're sticking just with the vocab which we have done, which is Himaru Rajuli, the man's donkey. Okay, let's see over here. Sayyaratul Mudiri, the car of the principal, very good. Fi Kitabillahi, in the Book of Allah, very good. Baytu Hamidin, Babul Madrasati, all of them, very good. Okay, Sayyaratul Mudiri, that was that, that was one, two, three. Baytu Hamidin, Hamid's house. Mindilu Ammarin, very good. Ammar's handkerchief. And so we've got two over here before the one which was done. So which is Ismu, let's see, handkerchief of Ammar, that's correct. So we've got Ismu Talibi, the student's name. 
and we've got Baytullahi, the house of Allah. Fi kitabillahi was done earlier in the book of Allah. We do the last two of this exercise. Min Baytil Mudarrisi. Min Baytil Mudarrisi. But obviously, if you are pronouncing him with the Jweed, you're not going to say Min, you're going to say Mim. So Min Baytil Mudarrisi from the teacher's house. And the last one, Ala Maktabil Mudiri on the principal's desk. So on the principal's desk in this manner. Ala Maktabil Mudiri. So Ala affects Maktabi, gives him a kasra. Maktabi should have been Maktabul Mudiri. So this Mudaf made the Mudaf Ilayi get a kasra. So he's got a kasra because of him. And he's got a kasra because of him. So Ala Maktabil Mudiri. And that's the end of exercise number two on the principal's desk. We move on now to exercise number four, which is simply wanting you to read. Read and translate, obviously. So number four says, Iqra, read. And we're only going to do, like I say, just these two. And uh, we'll continue again next week, inshallah, from the next page. But for now, number one says, Aina baytul mudarrisi, huwa ba'idun. Where is the teacher's house? And the reply which is given is huwa, it, meaning the house. Huwa ba'idun, it is far, meaning he don't live around here, he live far away. So where we talking about in this uh, area, this locality, uh, you know, he, he don't live nearby here. He lives quite a distance away, his house isn't anywhere close by. And number two, al-Qur'anu kitabullahi, the Qur'an is the book of Allah. And that's where we'll stop for tonight, inshallah. we done very little, but I prefer to do uh, little till we get back into the swing of things. I know we, you know, if you haven't been uh, doing Arabic in a while, you may have gotten a bit rusty. You may have, uh, let's put it this way, uh, slacked off and not followed up. But like I say, all the previous classes, the recordings are available on the YouTube channel. So if you need to brush up on anything, the classes are all there. It's quick and simple. You know, our classes are not that long when it comes to the Arabic. So you're going to take out, what, two hours? And you'll have covered all the, the classes probably. So, uh, yeah, basically we'll stop here for tonight, inshallah. Um, and 20 page 29 is where we will begin from next week. But seeing as we don't have any questions and we don't have any uh, thing extra to do. We will end on this point here, inshallah. We'll continue on with our A'ala Sunan class uh, tomorrow night, inshallah. Same time, 9 p.m. South African time, 7 p.m. UK time. I don't know what other p.m. or a.m. when it comes to other countries in the world. But that being that, we end on this point here, inshallah. Until next time, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashiru wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته